Joe here with Joe Martin VC, and today we're going to take a look at how to tape and mud factory joints and drywall. All right, to start off with, we're going to go ahead and add our water. Now we're not gonna need a whole lot of mud to do this because we're only doing that small area. Go ahead, throw our mud in. You always wanna start off with a little bit of water in the cup first. Add your mud and then add water as needed. Because if you put the mud in initially, it will just all stick to the bottom and be a pain. All right. And we want to mix the mud up pretty thin for this since we're putting the tape on the wall. I mixed it up too thin. So if you do go too thin, nothing to worry about. See, it's kind of more like uh, thin pancake batter. Just add a little bit more mud to it. Not gonna need too much. All right. We kind of want more of a thick pancake batter consistency. See, that's more of the thicker consistency we're wanting. Actually, add just a hair more water. A little too thick. There we go. That's about what we're what we're looking for there. All right, now we'll go ahead and put it on our hawk and then start to get on the wall. All right, so whether you wish to use a trough or a hawk and trowel is completely up to you. I prefer a hawk. I just feel I have a little bit more control with, with mud when I use a hawk, so that's what I prefer to use. And we're just scraping our mud out. Put it on. Nice and simple. Get all as much mud as you can out. And this should be more than enough to tape the little section that we're doing. All right, so we'll go ahead and switch around to the wall. We'll walk through the taping process. All right, so the first thing we need to do is go ahead and get our section of mud up on the wall. You can either go sideways or you can go across. You wanna make sure it's nice and thick, filling the line between about an inch, inch and a half down, over. And it's okay if we go a bit thicker with the mud right now because we will be taking a lot of this off. You're gonna notice I'm gonna skip this section right here because I'll be doing a different taping method for that. So I'm not forgetting it. And I just threw mud on the floor, cool. You should always protect your, uh, your working surfaces because inevitably you will get mud everywhere. Anytime you're working with thinner mud especially, it very easily fall right off your knife onto the ground. I'm working at the edge of my mic here. Okay, so it's a little, a little wider of an area than what I'd like. You know, I'd like to keep it more in about that area, but it's fine. All right, once you have your mud on the wall, Go ahead, grab your, your tape. I always recommend for factory joints like this, paper tape will be your best friend. So we're gonna go start this end over here. And now on paper tape, you have this little, little section right here that will actually fold for corners. You always wanna make sure this is out from the wall, not on the inside. Otherwise your corners will lift up on you. So go ahead. I don't have any fancy taping rolls or anything like that. I just have a roll of tape. All right, From there, go ahead and come out to where we're gonna be. Put your tape against the wall, tear against it. Nice and simple. Now, whenever you're actually squeezing the mud out, you always start from center and go out, because if you start from over here, you're gonna peel your tape off the wall. So 
start at center. Come on out. And what we're doing is we're embedding the tape into the wall. It's a very simple process and I just almost hit my hawk. Yeah, so you can see we have way too much mud. That's okay. You can always mix up more mud, throw it away. Not too big of a deal. All right, so just go ahead, apply light pressure with the knife at about a 45 degree angle. I'm pretty sure my arm is just totally in that shot. That's okay. Got mud out of this section here. All right, now that we have our tape actually embedded in, you can actually start to see where it's starting to get saturated from the mud. We want the whole thing saturated. So, easiest way to do that, yeah, just put some mud on it. Our total coat thickness is gonna be about an eighth of an inch. Almost flung mud everywhere again. Now we're putting way too much mud on it at the, at the moment. That's fine. We'll be taking it off. Now one mistake a lot of people make is they will overwork their tape and cause it to have bubbles or lift up from the edges. So we wanna be careful not to do that. So we're just going to focus on getting the tape covered, take off the excess, and then stop. So light pressure, just go across. I didn't have enough mud for this edge over here, so. I can feel my microphone pulling, which makes this far more difficult. Okay. So if you actually press in into the wall here and press against your mud, it's going to press too much of the mud out. Your tape will have high spots and bubbles underneath. Bubbles aren't the worst thing in the world. If it happens, you'll just have to go back, cut the mud or cut the tape, and then you can go ahead and get that out. Alright, so we're just about done here with this first coat. Now if you look, there's some really high spots right through here. We want to get rid of those. The way you do that, take two fingers, put it on the very edge, and what you're going to do is you're going to press the edge of the, the knife, you're probably right here's better, edge of the knife against the top or the bottom, depending on which side you're working on, and actually float the top, the bottom edge off. So, pressure up top, and this feathers the edge for us. This makes sure to where we don't have a hard line. You can see we get quite a bit of mud from doing that. Same thing on the bottom. This will make sure where you don't have to do nearly as much sanding. Oh boy. Can I do it with my mic not ripping off? And then same thing on the bottom. Now I have one little mess up. I have a, a very low spot right there. So we're just gonna take a little bit of mud and fill it in. Not the end of the world. All right, that's it. That is our first coat. Now we see we've got some high spots throughout here and it looks like a little bit of high spot here. You know, we can try to work on that if we want. It's not a big deal if it's there because we do have to come back and put more, more mud on. But for now, this takes care of that first coat. We don't have to worry about sanding this, which is really big because if you have to sand where your tape is, nine times out of 10, you're gonna sand into your, into your tape and just creates an issue. Now while we're here, since I have way too much mud, we're going to go ahead, fill in the hole, screw holes. Now whenever you fill in your screw holes, I don't know if you can see this on camera, let's, uh, let's pan the shot up some. Boop. Okay, pan on up. So you go down one way and then you go across the other way to remove mud. So remove, remove. I'm too short. And that will fill everything in. while removing the excess mud. All right, so that's it for now. We'll come back in about 45 minutes at our second coat. All right, so this is what our first coat looks like after we applied it. 
So we can see the tape is wet, which is what we want. We do have a couple of small ridges like right here. And if we come back, come on camera. Come back over here, we see one here. We have whatever was on my tape, not a big deal. A little bit of a ridge there. Now the reason we don't care about this is we're going to be putting a second coat that's going to cover that and come out to about here, uh, the, the six inch line. So here to here. And depending on how well we do, we may be good with just two coats. We will see. But we'll come back after this is dried and put a second coat on. All right, so before we put our second coat on, we are going to scrape off any high spots that we have. So we have a little bit through here and here. We just take our six inch knife and just very simply go over it. Let's just make sure we have a nice smooth finish and clear out all that in there because I don't want that there. Cross. You can see just a little bit of dust that comes off. This isn't much. Look right there, there was a high spot, so that it's off. Over here. All right, so we're ready for our next coat. All right, so now it's time for our second coat and we're going to be using two knives. We're going to be using our six inch knife and then a 12 inch knife, which I've got down there. Uh, so I always like to start, start off with the six inch knife because for me, it's just easier to get the mud on initially. So pretty similar, coat the mud, spread it around. As I said, for me, a hawk is just easier to work with. You can use a, a, a trip, uh, trough and trowel if it's easier for you. Man, that's even more. For me, it's not. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to fill in the, the section between the bottom of the little dip here and the top of it. Because on factory edges like this, there's actually a small wave that occurs between the two pieces of drywall. And all we're doing is we're just filling that in. We don't need to come all the way down to the bottom here or way up here with what we're doing. And now I am putting on way too much mud over here and that's fine. I'm gonna be taking a lot of this off in a moment. And I'm trying not to pull my camera off because my mic is uh, getting pulled some. Okay, so once you have your mud down, go ahead and take off the majority of it. So that way you only have what's needed. And now we can see, you can see the, the tape underneath. I can see I need a little bit more mud through here, a little bit here. And the way that I know that is I can see where the, the drop off is between the, the first coat and the, the new coat. So if I see that, I just slop it in. Oh. And try not to slop it on my floor. Okay. And just come back, get the majority of it off. And once again, we're only going for about an eighth of an inch. We're not going for super thick because we don't need to. A little bit here, here, and just kind of look for spots where you can see it's it's different. Where like right here, I'm gonna regret doing this, but right here you can see that there's a low spot. I don't know if it's visible on camera, but a little bit more mud, scrape through. Way over here in this corner, I can see that I need a lot more mud and the issue is I my mic is pulling on me, so. I'm going to work a little bit more extended, so I just put it up here. And don't be afraid to go too high, you can always remove mud. There's always sanding, wet sanding, and just removing with a knife. Okay, so now that we have our mud on there, which to me this looks pretty good, we can test it, see how it looks. Okay, it's mostly straight, mostly flat. I can see a little bit of sunlight on the other side of my knife, which tells me that there's a low spot through here. So, go ahead. Slap some more mud on. And with 90 minute mud, you have plenty of work time. Don't, don't be scared with it. Now, if you're going with like 20 minute mud, I don't recommend doing that. You have, you have about 20 minutes at best. Um, also when I'm doing this, I don't have my fan on. So it's a little warm, but it's better because the fan will, will dry it out quickly. All right, 
right, so now that I've got a ton of mud on the wall, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my 12 inch knife. And also, I highly recommend for, if you do go with the hawk route, have a bucket or something nearby that you can set the hawk in. It makes your life so much easier. So you take your 12 inch knife, and once again, you can see just how flat everything is, and I've got something in my knife by going this route. And of course, our mud is high right now. When we pull away, there's a spot. Hi, guys. So you wanna start at about a, eh, about a, a 60 ish degree angle and then pull your knife across and slowly come down to about a 45. And as long as you have a good quality knife that's clean, you'll get a nice clean finish here. And you can go quicker than this. This is just for demonstration purposes. And you stop about three quarters of the way. You can see how much mud I have there. I'm gonna grab my hawk here. I have to work around my cord. Hi, Iz. I know you wanna be part of the video. You always do. Get rid of your excess. Now I'll come from the other way. And as you get closer to this section, you actually want to kind of lift up with the knife some. So come here, start about 60 degrees, and then pull down to 45. And come off. So we have a little bit of a ridge right here, but that's fine. Now if we check our check right here, there's no light coming through there. So I know that's nice and flat. And it's flat across the whole panel. And that's why I said you only need to go, what is this, like six inches or so? about six inches from top to bottom to fill in this area. Now, when we come over to the wall here, over to the right, where we have to go across two flat seams that are either cut seams or two factory edges of the drywall joined together that aren't uh, the, the factory edges, they're called butt joints, that's a little different. So right through here, we can see there's a, a huge lip. So we're gonna try, pull again, see if maybe we just didn't get enough mud up there. Yeah. So if I take my knife right now and I look right here, I can see there's a ton of light coming through on this side of my knife where the shadow is. So that tells me I need to take a little bit more mud up there. Now I'm not good with a 12 inch knife when it comes to putting mud on the wall. I drop it every time. So I can come back, grab my six inch knife and just drag it across right here. Bring it up some. Okay, that's all I have to do. Add a little bit of mud there, put my knife down, grab my 12 inch knife. Voila. Now it looks like we might have a little bit of an issue here. Tiny little bit right there. Personally, I'm, I'm pretty okay with that. Okay, so that gets rid of the excess mud. As you see, I mix up way too much, I always do. Eh, I said I'm okay with it, I'm not okay with it. So, I'm just gonna go back. You can see along these edges here where it's starting to become very white. This mud is already starting to dry, out, dry up a bit. Now, one thing I haven't heard a lot of people mention when it comes to drywall tutorials is humidity. If you're in a very humid environment, like Florida, your mud will take a very long time to dry. Uh, because the humidity in the air will actually keep the mud activated for much longer. However, I have a dehumid... Come on. I have a dehumidifier in my house, so... I keep it at about 50% humidity. That will dry the mud out quickly. Now, you can start in the very middle here, but you're going to have a spot where you do. So if you're close to an edge, just go ahead and start at your edge. Pull your knife, 45 degrees. Voila. All done. So that's two coats. Honestly, we have a train. Uh, honestly, that's all we're going to need for this. So that's it. Once this is done, I'm going to come back with a damp sponge and wet sand it. And that's it. We're done. So we'll touch base in, you know, 45 minutes, an hour when this is fully dry and take on that step. All right. So it's time for us to move on to wet sanding. And this is actually going to be the only thing that we have to do because we actually got a pretty good finish overall. We don't have any hard edges, anything like that. So what you do is you grab a grout sponge. You can get these at Home Depot, Lowe's, any hardware store. It's like a bucket sponge. Get it to where it's damp so no water actually comes out. Well, a couple drops. Uh, if it's so wet that it's just dripping while you're holding it, way too wet. And then just simple back and forth. Clean up any, any spots that are raised like right here. Really focus on your edges. That way it feathers in the rest of the way. Right here's a little high spot, so 
And this can very quickly and easily take away all of your mud that you put on. So just be careful. And that just smooths everything out. So like right here, because my 12 inch knife isn't great, it's got a lot of dips and ridges in it, it's a little rough. So just go over here with the damp sponge that smooths it out for us. We can do that all the way down. Now, if your sponge gets too clogged up, have a bucket behind you or next to you so that way you can rinse out your sponge because you don't want it completely clogged with drywall mud. You be kind of gentle with it because if you're not too careful, you can actually take the paper off of the drywall itself. And that's uh, then you have to go back and fix that. So, all right, our sponge is a little too clogged up now. So, uh, dip in our bucket, which you can't see because it's off off camera, but that's fine. Rinse it out. Okay, so once again, not super wet. My hand it is though. Get the bottom. Just smooth everything out. And we're not applying much pressure. Literally, I'm just gliding it across the wall. The only time that I apply any extra pressure is if I have a spot like, say right here where I can see a little bit of a ridge, I'll apply a little bit more pressure right there. And now it's gone. Over here, a little bit of a ridge here. And you can fix a lot of the mistakes you have. So I didn't realize you could actually wet sand all this for many years. I've been doing uh, hobby level drywall work for a very long time, uh, about eight years. I've always just dry sanded everything. And dry sanding makes a huge mess whenever you do it. You know, it's recommended to have a, a shop vac or a dust collector set up around you. So that way you collect everything and you don't have a, a room full of dust. I didn't know that, that you could do this. So that's it, we are done. Uh, now I'm just go wait for that to dry, which that's gonna take a little bit longer because it's wet. Uh, wait for it to dry. And then you can go over this, you can prime it, you can texture it, paint it, whatever you want to do, you are good to go. So that's how you do a factory joint. Uh, next video that we'll do, we'll be covering the wall that we have over here to the right with this butt joint that we have. So we'll go through the process of doing that and that'll be the next video. And then we have one more down at the very bottom for how to do a factory joint to a butt joint. So stay tuned for that. As always, if you like the content that's coming out, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and don't forget to hit the notification bell to stay up to date with new content as it comes out. Thanks so much for watching. Take care.